and have peace and you can have it in the next second surrender admittedly there's a risk in any course we follow other than this but every lesson in history tells us that the greater risk lies in appeasement and it gives us no choice between peace and war only between fight and surrender if we continue to accommodate continue to back and retreat eventually we will have to face the final demand the final ultimatum and what then when Satan has told the people of this world, he knows what our answer is going to be. He has told them that we're retreating under the pressure of his cold war. And someday when the time is right to deliver his final ultimatum, our surrender will be voluntary. Because you see, by then, we will have been so weakened from within, spiritually, morally, economically. He believes this because from our side, he's heard voices pleading for peace at any price. Or better read than dead. Or as one commentator put it, he'd rather live on his knees than die in his feet. And therein lies the road to war. Because those voices don't speak for the rest of us you and i know it and do not believe that life is so dear and peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery if nothing in life is worth dying for when did this begin just in the face of this enemy or should moses have told the children of israel to live in slavery under the pharaohs should christ have refused the cross should the patriots at concord ridge have refused to fire the shot heard around the world the martyrs of history were not fools in our beloved dead who gave their lives to stop the advance and the Nazis did not die in vain. Where then lies the road to peace? Well, it's a simple answer after all that you and I have the courage to tell our enemies. There is a price we will not pay. There is a point beyond which evil must yeah. not advance. In the words of Reagan, evil is powerless if the good are unafraid. Nevertheless, I take all of these slings and arrows gladly for you. I take them for our movement so that we can have our country back. This is a crossroads in the history of our civilization that will determine whether or not we, the people, reclaim control over our government. But I said, something's wrong here, something's wrong here. This country is gone. The rest of the world will follow. The rest of the world will follow. That's the importance of this country. Our exciting adventures and moments and numbers have not yet begun. My fellow Americans, for our movement, for our children, and for our beloved country. And I say this, despite all that's happened, the best is yet to come.